Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth lecture of the enemy. In the last four classes, we had seen that Dr. Sadao and Hana, they come across the body of an injured white man whom they take in. They know that he is a prisoner of war and they are faced with a dilemma whether to help this man or not. But finally, both of them agree to bring the man to the house and treat him. Okay. So, we stopped at the question is whether he will not die anyway. Sadao is fixed in a problem and he knows that the man, he would some way later or sooner, he would have to face death. Now, let us see what happens next. Hana cried out in fear. Don't try to save him. What if he should live? So why is she saying so? Why is she urging Sadao not to save the man? Because she knows that if the man is alive, they would have to do, uh, you know, they would have to hand him over to the police, which is again very, very brutal. They would be compelled to throw the man back into the same condition from where he had tried to escape and they were very much aware of the brutality that was meted out towards the prisoners of war what if he should die Sadao replied he stood gazing down on the motionless men the man must have extraordinary vitality vitality means energy strength or stamina or he would have been dead by now, the way he was bleeding. Sadao was not sure if the man would survive. So he thought that by the time he is able to treat the man, he would perhaps die due to excessive blood loss. But then he was very young, perhaps not yet 25. So we come to know for the first time that the young sailor, he was not more than 25 years old very very young and we know uh, i suppose all of you know that only young people are taken or chosen as cadets for uh, army or navy or air force right so he says you mean die from the operation hana asked hana puts up a question you are telling that uh, if the man is operated upon he would die Sadao replied, Yes, Sadao said. Hana considered this doubtfully. She considered she was very thoughtful. She turned thoughtful for a few seconds. And when she did not answer, Sadao turned away. At any rate, something must be done with him, he said. And first, he must be washed. So before doing anything, before treating him, it is necessary because the man was dirty and uh, you know there are chances of infections developing so before doing anything they it's necessary that the man is being washed he went quickly out of the room and hana came behind him she did not wish to be left alone with the white man he was the first she had seen since she left america and now he seemed to have nothing to do with those whom she had known there here he was her enemy, a menace, living or dead. So I suppose you all remember that both Hana and Dr. Sadao, they were students of medicine and surgery in America. And during their stay in America, they had known many of the American people, American friends. Okay, But after leaving America, after getting married and settled here in Japan, Hana had not come across any American and with the in, uh, in what you can call it uh, with the start of this world war two the second world war there were no chances of making friends or coming to terms with any American so definitely she was quite terrified she was so terrified that she did not even want to stay or share the room or the roof with the white man though he was unconscious Presently, we know that the man was actually surviving under their pity. They were, he was under the sympathy of Dr. Sadao and Hana. Then why should Hana be so afraid? Here comes in the concept of fear towards enemy. The concept of enmity that puzzles us, that confuses us. 
we don't know what whether it is you know it is not something that is uh, that we are born with but it is something that is instilled into our minds just take for instance if we come across any pakistani definitely we would be worried but it is not that every pakistani is a terrorist okay or every chinese is a bad man but still we fear we consider these people to be our enemies so definitely hana having not met american for a long time having uh, faced with the trauma of the war she definitely feared staying together with the white man it didn't matter to her whether he was a living man or dead here he was her enemy a menace what is the meaning of menace menace means someone who poses a threat or danger it was dangerous to stay with this man alone she turned to the nursery and called yummy yummy she was the caretaker of the children and at the time she was in the children's room okay she was busy with the children and this is the nursery a place where babies toddlers and children are being placed there is a separate room in you know big families you would find that and uh, uh, yummy being the nanny she was busy with the children maybe it was late night it was time for the children to go to bed so she was trying to uh, put them to sleep and uh, hana she called out yummy but the children heard her voice and she had to go in for a moment and smile at them and play with the baby boy now nearly 3 months old we had learned that sadaw and hana they were the parents of two children one was elder the other one is a baby boy who was just 3 months old okay over the baby's soft black hair she motioned with her mouth yummy come with me in a whisper she just signaled yummy that uh, she needed to talk something very very important with her i will put the baby to bed yummy replied he is ready she went with yummy into the bedroom next to the nursery and stood with the boy in her arms while yummy spread the quilts on the floor quilts means blankets okay or mattresses and laid the baby between them you know japanese people they hardly use any wooden bed so most of the time it is a mattress that is being spread out on the floor so the sleeping quilts the mattress it was being spread out and the baby was put there then hana led the way quickly and softly to the kitchen the two servants were frightened at what their master had just told them so already in the kitchen the two stall servants other two servants they were also present and they looked quite tensed and frightened because they had already been informed by their master who is the master dr sada okay and what did he inform that an enemy was at home the old gardener who was also a house servant pulled the few hairs on his upper lip out of tension he was plucking at his beard the master ought not to heal the wound of this white man so this is his opinion the servant the old gardener's opinion that it was indeed a wrong decision to have taken in an enemy the master should not have tried to treat this white man he said bluntly to hana bluntly means very put across very sharply against not sharply uh, rather you know at her face okay very bluntly the white man ought to die first he was shot then the sea caught him and wounded him with a rocks it is as if nature did not want the white man to be alive or rather it is so that the you know it is thought by the or the gardener thinks so that nature even nature is against the survival of the white man the white man is not only the enemy of the people but also of nature so this is what he thinks that if the master heals what the gun did and what the sea did they will take revenge on us so he is worried about the consequences of the treatment it was not only an act of you know anti patriotic act but also uh against nature against the rule of or the law of 
nature so he being an old man he was quite conservative in his outlook and also very superstitious so this is what we can come to know okay i will tell him what you say i will tell him what you say hana replied courteously so keeping her calm maintaining that distance and behaving like a mature woman hana replied very politely even to the servant that she would let her husband know but she herself was also frightened it is not only that the servants were worried even hana was very very terrified although she was not superstitious as the old man was though her fear was not regarding the superstitious belief could it ever be well to help an enemy it's a question of her philosophy it's a question of nationalism okay so she was worried regarding those terms are they correct in harboring a man who is uh, who is a person belonging to an enemy nation right nevertheless she told yummy to fetch the hot water and bring it to the room where the white man was so keeping aside all these thoughts she asked yummy to bring the water and you know so that the white man who was inside the room who needs treatment immediate treatment he was to be washed okay she went to hand and slid back the partitions now what are the partitions japanese partitions okay or sliding doors it's also called shoji okay the rooms are separated by this partition doors sadao was not yet here till now sadao had not returned to the room yummy following put down her wooden bucket then she went over to the white man when she saw him her thick lips folded themselves into stubbornness i have never washed a white man she said and i will not wash so dirty a one now so it seems that everyone the servants including yummy they were highly prejudiced against the white race they looked up at the white man with contempt with disgust and now that this man was so dirty she was totally reluctant she almost rebelled and protested okay stubbornness stubbornness means arrogant her arrogance was visible in her lips the thick lips that folded okay hana cried at her severely yes hana cried at her severely and uh, you will do what your master commands you hana was very angry seeing that this woman was behaving very in a very stubborn manner so she protested and she was very angry and she uh, repeated the question that you must do whatever i want you to do there was so fierce a look of resistance upon yummy's round dull face that hana felt unreasonably afraid though she was the mistress from the body language from the facial expression of yummy hana was also terrified she could understand that uh, you know that there was something boiling inside yummy not only yummy she could even understand the sentiments of the other servants in the house after all if the servant should report something that was not as it happened so this is the reason behind her worry she was worried that after the secret has been revealed to the servant they would protest they would oppose their decision and they would report it back to the army back to the police and that can be very very dangerous for dr sadao's reputation as well as his uh, you know future okay very well she said with dignity maintaining her standard okay not stooping low maintaining her dignity and respect she replies that okay you understand we only want to bring him to his senses so that we can turn him over as a prisoner so this is the reason why we are trying to help him out because we also don't want to actually help him but rather we are trying to bring him back to his senses and hand him over to the police so she is trying to give an explanation behind the reason to uh, bring this white man to their house right i will have nothing to do with it yummy said i am a poor person and it is not my business so i am very sorry but i am not going to help you here 
then please hana said gently return to your own work okay fine you don't want to work leave at once yami left the room but this left hana with the white man alone once again she is forced to remember she was terrified to stay to uh, stay with the white man in the same room though he was unconscious once again she is posed with the same problem now since yami had decided not to help her with the man right she might have been too afraid to stay had not her anger at yami's stubbornness now sustained her it is because of yami's arrogant nature the way yami had behaved or uh, reacted to her request she was so angry that it is her anger which had forced her compelled her sustained her okay to continue staying in the same room otherwise internally hana was really very terrified to stay with the white man stupid yummy she muttered fiercely is this anything but a man a wounded helpless man she is just thoughtful that this woman she is just stupid you know why she is stupid because this man is only a wounded man who is helpless who can't do anything who is at the pity of the uh, family sada hockey's family right and uh, she was very angry with the attitude shown by yami in the conviction of her own superiority she bent impulsively and untied the knotted rugs that kept the white man covered so she somewhere or the other there is a difference in the mental setup between hana and the servants yami belonging to a lower category she could not think higher so somewhere or the other hana's superiority emerges here as a human being as a person as an individual so continuing with that superiority she you know bent she bent low she stooped low impulsively automatically and untied opened up the knotted rugs that means the tied up uh, rugs rugs means referring to the torn clothes worn by the soldier okay and uh, that kept the white man covered so immediately she stoops down and opens the worn out dress that the man was doing when he she had his be- breast bare she dipped the small clean towel that yami had brought into the steaming hot water and washed his face carefully the man's skin though rough with exposure was of a fine texture and must have been very blond when he was a child so from his appearance from this look hana could just make out because she had been she had stayed in america for so long she knew uh, the you know you know the american people or their upbringing she has seen small children and uh, the blond children of america so from the texture it appeared that the man he might have been a very very blond child blond means fair or light in color okay now while she was thinking these thoughts to not really liking the man better that now he was uh, no longer a child she kept on washing him until his upper body was quite clean so she was using the towel and cleaning him because he needs to be operated but she dare not turn him over where was sadao constantly her mind was shifting between thoughts once she was thinking about uh, how this man was an enemy and she was angry with yummy she was filled with disgust at the same time she was thinking of herself as a superior person in comparison with people like yummy and the old gardener right and uh, uh, her mind reflected back to america and american people the blonde child the blonde children of america okay and she kept on washing at the same time she was also wondering where was sada where sada was because she did not want to stay any longer with the 
uh, you know enemy now her anger was ebbing ebbing means her anger was rising and she was anxious again and she rose wiping her hand on the wrong towel in her frustration she almost forgot which towel was to be used and she ended up using the wrong towel then lest the man be chill she put the quilt over him and again we see the example of uh, humanity the humanity exhibited by hana automatically you know it's not something that is uh, created you know humanity or humanism in something that is in uh, you know instinctive something that is uh, that we have inside us automatically naturally it is not something uh, that can be instilled from outside it is inborn okay so hana her humanity which was inborn in her that is exhibited here when she cares for the man and she considers his she thinks that the man would be feeling very cold after he had been washed with hot water she automatically pulls the quilt over him so now she calls softly he had been about to come in when she called his hand had been on the door and now he opened it she saw that he had brought his surgeon's emergency bag and that he wore his surgeon's coat so sadao he had decided to operate and he was already dressed in the surgeon's garments the surgeon's coat his flashlight ready on his head as well as he had his emergency toolkit okay the surgeon's emergency bag it was there with him so here you can see the picture of a surgeon's emergency bag containing of all the necessary things needed for an immediate operation okay forceps knives and every other incisors and everything else right you have decided to operate she cried almost shocked to find that sadao had decided to you know go deep into the treatment of the man a man who was considered to be an enemy yes he said shortly he turned his back to her and unfolded a sterilized towel open uh, upon the floor of the tokonama alcove and put his instruments out upon it tokonama it is a recessed space especially in japanese households uh, it is generally used for displaying items of artistic appreciation okay an alcove a place where so pieces or different other you know flower vases or paintings they are being displayed okay ornamental things are being displayed so he spread out a uh, towel on that alcove on that tokonoma tokonoma and asked hana fetch towels he said okay she uh, she was being uh, asked to draw the towels which would be necessary during the operation she went obediently but how anxious now to the linen cells and took out the towels there ought also to be old pieces of matting so that the blood would not ruin the fine floor covering okay so she went to the back veranda where the gardener kept strips of matting with which to protect delicate shrubs on cold night and took an armful of them now this is uh, you might have noticed japanese mats okay it is a japanese mat Uh, and these are generally used to cover up the floor of a japanese house and she did not want to ruin the beautifully decorated house or room of the father in law okay the father in law wanted to be very precise he was very uh, conscious about the presentation of his room he wanted his room to be exactly uh japanese without any arbitrary inclusions so she feared that the blood from the operation would spoil the floor and that's why she looked or looked for old japanese mats which were now being used to protect the delicate shrubs in the garden so she went out and fetched those uh 
uh, maths right but when she went back uh, into the room she saw this was useless why was it useless because the blood had already soaked through the packing in the man's wound and had ruined the mat under him remember the wound it was packed with moss sea moss but it was of no help the man was bleeding so much that the blood it had spilled out and the entire floor the area where he was laid it was drenched in blood okay the matting it has the fresh matting it has absorbed the or rather uh, it has taken in the blood okay oh the mat she cried yes it is ruined sadar replied as though he did not care so it was, it did not matter him much whether the uh, decor was disturbed or not he was totally absorbed in treating the man help me to turn him he commanded her she obeyed him without a word and he began to wash the man's back carefully yummy would not wash him she said did you wash him then sadao asked not stopping for a moment with his swift concise movements so she he was moving his hands very swiftly like a very practiced doctor practiced surgeon so during that they also converse and here uh hana reveals that the servants have refused to help them out in their work yes she said he did not seem to hear her but she was used to his absorption when he was at work she wondered for a moment if it mattered to him what was the body upon which he worked so long as it was for the work he did so excellently dr sadao was such a perfectionist that it was visible from his work the way he got deeply involved in his work even hana realized that that he was not concerned with who is the person that he's treating it didn't matter him whether the man was a friend or a foe whether the man was his own father or his wife or a stranger but what mattered to him most is the work his love for his job his profession that was more important to him and that is why perhaps hana thought he could very excellently beautifully you know demonstrate his work or carry on with his work you will have to give anesthetics if you need it he said i she repeated blankly but i but never have i i suppose you remember that uh, you know hana she was also a doctor but she had not practiced much and that is why probably uh, she was quite taken aback when dr sada asks her to apply anesthetic i suppose you know what anesthetics are uh, you know it is a drug that is being used to uh, immobilize a patient uh, okay so so that the unconscious state continues during a operation or treatment right now what did he do he yeah it is easy enough he said impatiently he's trying to comfort hana and saying that it's okay you can do it just uh, stirring up her confidence level he was taking out the packing now and the blood began to flow more quickly the moment the packing of that sea moss is removed blood started to f- uh you know flow rapidly he peered into the wound with the bright surgeon's light fastened on his forehead the bullet is still there so the light showed that the bullet was still inside and he could see it from the from outside right he said with cool interest now i wonder how deep this rock wound is if it is not too deep it may be that i can get the bullet but the bleeding is not superficial he has lost much blood it's not superficial that means the blood was actually flowing too much and uh, if maybe he would able to he would be able to rescue the life of this man uh, if the wound is not too deep and the bullet has not pierced deeper right so this is his um, you know verdict after analyzing after scrutinizing the body of the enemy right now 
at this moment hana choked hana choked that means she felt like she couldn't speak or she felt like you know uh, a strange feeling her throat she couldn't breathe properly right she was choking he looked up and saw her face the color of sulfur it has turned yellowish okay the color of sulfur don't faint faint he said sharply don't become unconscious control yourself he was trying to tell uh, you know trying to uh, support hana as much as possible because if hana becomes unconscious now he would be posed with a very very big problem it's not easy to handle an operation uh, alone you need assistance right and right now he needed the assistance of hana he did not put down his exploring instrument if i stop now the man would surely die she clapped her hand to the mouth clapped means she covered her mouth with her hand and leaped up and ran out of the room outside in the garden he heard her retching retching means she was vomiting okay spitting and vomiting but he went on with his work such a cool minded person he was so involved with his work that the work meant more than anything else and he was not at all digressed from his business from his profession it will be better for her to empty her stomach even he felt so he thought he had forgotten that of course she had never seen an operation but her distress and his inability to go to her at once made him impatient and irritable with this man who lay like dead under his knife that means though he was out uh, you know outside he was trying to keep his composure he was trying to uh, continue with the operation the process of incision okay cutting the uh, wound and you know tearing the flesh and then drawing or extracting the bullet he was continuing that process because he knows that if he stops because there is a certain time limit uh, till which you know a patient can continue he was being a doctor he was trying his best to finish up with the operation uh, and he also wanted the man to be alive his patient whom he considered to be his patient now to be alive but then indirectly there was a reaction there is a side effect of that you know the the fact that he was unable to go out and help his wife that made him quite irritable fussy and angry and that he showed or rather exhibited while he was treating the man this man he thought there is no reason under heaven why he should live because sadao knew that now or later sooner or later he would definitely die okay in the hands of the japanese army unconsciously this thought made him ruthless ruthless means brutal and he proceeded swiftly without caring if the man is uh, you know it's paining or the man is uh, having any trouble it didn't matter him anymore the the f- moment that thought comes to his mind that sooner or later this man has to die there is no reason that why she should be alive that very moment he turns brutal he wanted to finish up with his work as soon as possible in his dream the man moaned whereas on the other side the patient the white man he was moaning what is the meaning of moaning moaning means to make sounds with your mouth murmuring rather but satao paid no heed except to mutter at him satao was also talking to the patient groan he muttered groan if you like i am not doing this for my own pleasure i know it's paining his this is the meaning what he is trying to mean that it's uh it's not out of pleasure or happiness that i am conducting this operation i don't want to operate you in fact i don't know why i am doing it very very important again see every time now and then the story writer perlis buck she focuses on the confusion that was still going on through dr sadaus mind till now he is confused as to why he was actually trying to help this white man this enemy the door opened and there was hana again and even hana see after facing all this trauma after puking after vomiting still she had that much of resistance and desire to come back to work 
Where is the anesthetic? She asked in a clear voice. That means what? That means Hana was ready to help him, assist him in his work. Sadao motioned with his chin. It is as well that you came back, he said. This fellow is beginning to stir. The man he has, uh, he was slowly regaining his senses. So it was necessary to apply anesthetic. She had the bottle and some cotton in her hand. But how shall I do it? She asked because she had no experience in it. She questioned Sadao. Simply saturate the cotton. Saturate means to wet the cotton and hold it near his nostril. Sadao replied without delaying for one moment the intricate detail of his work. When he breathes badly, move it away a little. Sometimes too much of anesthesia is dangerous for a patient's health. So the moment you find that he becomes restless, breathes heavily, you try to, uh, you know, uh, you know, take that cotton, you know, that swab away from his nostrils. And this is the, these are the instructions that Dr. Sadao gives to his wife. She crouched close to the sleeping face of the young American. It was a piteously thin face, she thought, and the lips were twisted. The man was suffering whether he knew it or not. Watching him, she wondered if the stories they heard sometimes of the sufferings of prisoners were true. So, I was telling you about the treatment that was being meted out towards the prisoners of war, especially in the prisons of Japan. How Japanese soldiers or army had mistreated. And this is a real fact. And Hana, Hana and you know common people like Hana, they have come to know about or rather they have heard about such stories. But then they were not sure whether these were real or false. They came like flickers of rumors told by word of mouth and always contradicted. There were contradictions in the story. Okay, If some people said so, there were other people who opposed. Right? In the newspapers, the reports were always that wherever the Japanese armies went, the people received them gladly with cries of joy at their liberation. Okay? The report said this, that the Japanese army was being was uh, you know was being celebrated was being hailed wherever they went but sometimes she remembered such men as general takima who at home beat his wife cruelly though no one mentioned it now that he had fought so victorious a battle in manchuria if a man like that could be so cruel to a woman in his power would he not be cruel to one like this for instance so many questions rising in Hannah's mouth. She could not totally believe in the reports that were uh, that came through way of papers or newspapers. According to newspaper reporters, the general uh, or the generals and soldiers of the Japanese army they were considered to be you know like godlike who relieved the people from their uh, bondage. They liberated the people, but then. She had also heard about men like or people like General Takima. General Takima, one of the, uh, you know, Japanese generals who was known to be a very cruel and inhuman dictator. A general of the Imperial Army of Japan that fought the Second World War. So he had, she had heard stories about General Takima and how he badly behaved with his own wife. So if he can behave so badly so roughly with his wife what would he do to prisoners of war okay the prisoners of war indeed they were beaten up badly but then these were all rumors that you know hana and her people heard she was not sure how much these stories had uh, were facts right she hoped anxiously that this man had not been tortured. It was at this moment that she observed deep red scars on his neck just under the ear. Those scars, she murmured, lifting her eyes to Sata. She had observed that just below the neck 
of that man there were certain dark, uh, dark scars red scars or marks as if he had been strangulated as if he had been pressed forcibly by the neck this was a clear example or a clear instance that indeed this man was also tortured though she did not want that to happen yet the fact is that he was being tortured and the scars were a proof of it but he did not answer when she pointed out the scars to sadao sadao did not answer she he kept his silence because he was still involved in his surgery at this moment he felt the tip of his instrument strike against something hard dangerously near the kidney something uh, he was probing with a forcep and suddenly he strikes against something probably it was the bullet all thought left him he felt only the purest pleasure he probed with his fingers delicately familiar with every atom of the human body he was an experienced doctor he was a famous doctor a doctor who was known for his perfect perfection you can call it okay and he knew the body the human body in such a way that not a single atom was strange to him right so with his practiced finger familiar um, uh, fingers which were familiar with every atom of the body he searched for that thing that struck his instrument right his old american professor of anatomy had seen to that knowledge ignorance of the human body it is is the surgeon's cardinal sin sirs he had thundered at his classes year after year to operate without as complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it anything less than that is a murder okay so his american professor he had heard he had attended the american university of surgery and there his professor one of the professors he remembers very well probably it was professor hali and he had thundered he had uh, spoke out loud and very clear in during the classes that if you want to be a perfect doctor if you want to be a perfect surgeon you have to know the body properly if you are not aware of every single atom of the body if you are ignorant about the body you are doing a crime it is a direct murder nothing less than a murder so it is by the boon or through the uh, knowledge imparted by an american professor that dr sada had earned his knowledge and he was able to utilize his knowledge in practice today okay but still you just look at it it is again americans that they they have that sense of prejudice so it's very very uh, it's it's a dichotomy that comes through in the lesson again and again what is the real concept behind enmity what is racial prejudice is such a prejudice at all necessary right okay let's continue it is not quite at the kidney my friend sada mohammed he was as if he was talking to the patient it was his habit to murmur to the patient when he forgot himself in an operation my friend he always called his patient so dr sadao had a habit of addressing his or rather he always try to make his patients comfortable by addressing them as friends and now and so uh, so now he did forgetting that this was his enemy again here it was his enemy that he was treating and he almost forgot he was so absorbed in his work that he forgot that the man he was treating the man he was operating upon it was a enemy he was an enemy right then quickly with the cleanest and most precise of incisions the bullet was out he made a cut and took out that bullet the man quivered quivered means he shook okay the man could sense it feel it that something had been extracted from his body but he was still unconscious nevertheless he muttered a few english words 
guts he muttered who is muttering these words the unconscious enemy soldier guts he muttered choking choking means he was breathless he was unable to speak properly because he was still unconscious he was still trying to mutter out they got my guts satao hana cried sharply she was moved to see how painful it was for the person hush satao silences her satao said the man sank again into silence so profound so deep profound means deep that satao took up his wrist hating the touch of it the way the man became unconscious again and silent again he feared that the man might have died so immediately he touched he took up the wrist and tried to read the pulse yes there was still a pulse so faint so feeble but but enough if you wanted the man to live give hope but certainly i do not want this man to live he thought so dr sadao though he was uh you know he wanted this man or he was worried about this man if he had died or not still somewhere or the other there was a feeling that it was better for the man to die then face the ruthlessness the brutality of the japanese soldier dr sadao therefore did not want the man to sustain or live because he knew that if he was handed over because he this if this man continues to live you know dr sadao he would be forced he would be uh, you know his uh, ideology his idea his ideology it would not allow him to keep or maintain the secret he would have to um, you know hand over this man to the police and once this man is handed over to police you can never say he would even lose his life so he wanted this man to seriously die some way or the other no more anesthetic he told hana he turned as swiftly as though he had never paused and from his medicines he chose a small vial and from it filled a hypodermic a hypodermic i suppose you have seen a hypodermic syringe okay it's a hypodermic needle and he thrust it into the patient's left arm then putting down the needle he took the man's wrist again so some kind of injection some kind of drug he you know uh, pushed or thrust into the man's veins the pulse under the finger fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger actually the man was about to collapse but right at that moment just like a doctor just like any other doctor dr sada forgetting the concept of enemy or enmity he uh tries to again give back life and so he instills a drug to revive the pulse and it works okay the pulse again grows stronger this man will live in spite of all he said to hana and shaid so whatever the consequences are from uh seeing finding that the man had continued to uh he had struggled through death and he had successfully you know revived his life dr sadao somewhere he felt there was a thin feeling that uh, this man would live there are chances that he has a long life after all the young man woke so weak his blue eyes so terrified when he perceived where he was so after the operation is over the man wakes up and he looked very very weak terror could be very well seen in his eyes his eyes which were blue in color and she, he was so terrified that hana she was almost because she was just standing before him and seeing that she was already dressed in traditional uh, japanese garments finding that this man this woman was a japanese and he was placed in a japanese household he was also very a lot and he was terrified and hana she was compelled to apologize here to beg sorry beg pardon 
she herself served him for none of the servants would enter the room so everything related with the man it has to be continued by hana because already uh, the servants including yami they had refused to follow the instructions of their master okay when she came in the first time she saw him summon his small strength to be prepared for some fearful thing she could see that the man was also terrorized he was also afraid because the first time she entered the room she had perceived that he was collecting his strength okay collecting his strength summon his small strength means he was still weak he was weak because he had just undergone an operation and he had already lost much blood but still he was with the remaining energy that he had he was trying to collect his energy and prepare himself for anything that could happen don't be afraid she begged him softly how come you speak english he gasped he was surprised to see a japanese woman speaking english i was a long time in america she replied she saw that he wanted to reply but that but he could not and so she knelt and fed him gently from the porcelain spoon porcelain spoon which was meant for feeding on soups okay it's a porcelain spoon i have given you the picture and you can see that see the picture okay so using that spoon she tried to feed this man he ate unwillingly but still he ate with half trust because on one hand he could find that he was placed in a japanese house and this ma- this woman she was trying to be so kind to him uh, though he feared that the food might not be food and it could be poison as well still he was forced to trust hana because after all till now nothing has happened to him okay now you will be soon uh, you will soon be strong she said not liking him and yet moved to comfort him he did not answer the gap the distance is still there when sadao came in the third day after operation he found the man sitting up his face bloodless with the effort actually rest is required lot of rest is required after operation and this man he was sitting up already maybe he was also in an urgency to get out of this japanese house as soon as possible but then it was dangerous okay so his face it showed uh, that he was still weak and he lacked blood okay lie down sada cried do you want to die what are you doing please sleep please lie down because if you don't lie down it is going to be very risky for your health so just like a doctor prescribing any other patient dr sadao is behaving or treating this man he forced the man down gently and strongly and examined the wound you may kill yourself if you do this sort of thing he scolded okay just like a uh, you know concerned doctor he is admonishing the soldier the american sailor what are you going to do with me the boy muttered he looked just now barely 17 are you going to hand me over earlier due to the rough look due to his rough beard and you know worn tattered clothes he was looking like a 25 year old guy but after he had been clean health reviving and looking at or you know observing the innocence in his question sadao could make out that this boy was not even 18 he was not even an adult okay and he was worried the boy seemed to be very very tensed he didn't know what is what are these Jap- japanese couple going to do with them he didn't know if they were going to hand him over to the police which indeed was indeed uh, hana and dr sadao they were preparing to hand him over to the police okay for a moment sadao did not answer he finished his examination he checked up the body of this man the wound the stitches and then pulled the silk quilt over the man once again covered the man's body with a silk blanket i do not know myself what i shall do with you he said i ought of course to give you to the police 
I don't know what I am going to do, but I think I will hand you over to the police. You are a prisoner of war. I know that you are a prisoner of war and you have escaped from prison. No, don't tell me anything. He didn't want any kind of explanation from the American prisoner, so he immediately stops him from speaking. He put up his hand as he saw the young man was about to speak. Do not even tell me your name unless I ask it. It's very strange that he does, doesn't want to uh, know the identity of this man. Okay, why is he say, doing so? Uh, you know, maybe there are two reasons. Maybe he didn't want to gather more information, which he would have to again hand over to the police or give to the police. Secondly, maybe he was also disgusted with Americans, so he didn't want to develop any kind of uh, comfort level with this man. So these two reasons can be possibly drawn, but then we are not very sure why actually he doesn't want to know the name of the man. They looked at each other for a moment and then the young man closed his eyes and turned his face to the wall. Okay, he whispered his mouth a bitter line. Bitter line means uh, there was a line developed because his mouth or his face appeared to be sunken. He was forced to follow the orders of Sadao without knowing what would be the consequences. Outside the door, Hana was waiting for Sadao. He saw at once that she was in trouble. So, Hana, seeing Hana waiting at the door, Sadao was immediately concerned. He knew that there was some problem in the household. Sadao, Yami tells me, the servants feel they cannot stay if we hide this man here anymore, she said. Okay. She tells me that they are saying that you and I were so long in America that we have forgotten to think of our own country first. They think we like American. So immediately there is a rebellion that was growing in the household among the servants. They were very very angry. They were very concerned. They were terrorized. They did not want to la uh, land in any problem because of Hana and Sadao's decision. For them, it was a wrong decision. The master shouldn't have helped a white American man, right? And secondly, they feel that these people are, these couple are anti-nationalists. They are not patriots. They are traitors of the nation because they have sheltered an enemy. That's why they did not want to partake or share the sin or crime which they consider to be crime. Harboring or sheltering a man who is an enemy okay so that is why they feel that it's better for them to leave or if they you know if hana and sadao want them to continue to stay at the household they should immediately hand this man over to the police right it is not true sadao said harshly americans are enemies but i have been trained not to let a man die if i can help it it's true that Americans are our enemies and this man is only an enemy to me. But then it is also true that I am a doctor and my duty is to give life or you know, help a man to live longer if it is possible. The servants cannot understand that, she said anxiously. Yes, indeed. The thinking, the mind, the ideas, the way of belief, everything differs. They are after all servants. They can only think in black and white on facts, right? But then these are people who can think beyond black and white. They have a deeper instinct and a deeper philosophy. So these servants cannot understand the sentiments or why actually Dr. Sada and Hana are trying to help this man. So Hana tells him that yes the servants cannot understand why actually you are trying to help this man no he agreed neither seemed able to say more and somehow the household dragged on the servants grew more watchful watchful their courtesy was as careful as ever but their eyes were cold upon the pair eyes were cold means 
they they were uh, filled with distrust for the master and mistress they did not seem to agree with the decision taken up by hana and dr sata and that's why they grew more watchful very cautious they were cautiously or spying on everything that the master and his wife were doing they even felt that actually they had some hand with the americans and that's why they were cold towards the couple it is clear what our master ought to do the old gardener said one morning he had worked with flowers all his life and he had been a specialist to in moss for sadao's father he had made one of the finest moss gardens in japan sweeping the bright green carpet constantly so that not a leaf or a pine needle marred the velvet of its surface okay so this is a moss garden as you can see in the picture and uh, japan uh, it is known for its moss gardens because the environment of japan it's very suitable it's it suits the growth of moss okay there are moss vases there are moss gardens and moss is used in almost everything like i have said earlier also you have seen that how moss is also used for medicinal purposes right so uh, it is very clear that what our master ought to do whatever the master is doing it's very distinct he's saying the old gardener is saying because from his attitude they could understand that he was trying to save the life of an american but for these men for sadao and hana this american was a human whereas the servants they could not understand it for them he was only an american an enemy of the nation my old master's son knows very well what he ought to do he now said pinching a bud from a bush as he spoke when the man was so near death why did he not let him bleed there is a purpose some way or the other the old gardener suspected the activities of dr satav he felt that sadao had purposely purposefully revived the life of this man who would have died there is a reason some kind of reason maybe he has a connection with the american army so this is these are some of the uh, uh, suspicion rising in the mind of the servants okay and uh, and it's true people would be forced to believe in such things right that young master is so proud of his skill to save life that he saves any life the cook said contemptuously again there is a cook who adds to the statement given by the old gardener she feels that satao was proud of his skills he wanted to show off his skills that is why he is trying to save the life of this uh, enemy she split a fowl's neck skillfully and held the fluttering blood a fluttering bird and let its blood flow into the roots of a wisteria vine this is the picture of a wisteria vine beautiful ornamental flowers okay flowers which are used for decoration you might have noticed blood is the best of fertilizers and the old gardener would not let her waste a drop of it very important line blood is the best of fertilizers the nation wants blood blood of the enemy so what should sadao have done sadao should have allowed the blood of this enemy to drain okay he should have taken the life of this man right so since blood is the best of fertilizers it can lead to the progress of the nation according to the concepts of the servant it is the children of whom we must think yami said so all the servants giving their ideas about the about the situation regarding the situation it is the children of we, whom we must think yami said sadly what will be their fate if their father is condemned as a traitor sooner or later it would be discovered that sadao was harboring or sheltering an enemy and uh, though it did not matter sadao and hana definitely the future of the children would be at stake okay if uh, you know people would be calling their father a traitor and their you know their reputation their life would not be easy then okay 
They did not try to hide what they said from the ears of Hana as she stood arranging the day's flowers in the veranda nearby and she knew they spoke on purpose that she might hear. Hana was very close by near the garden. She was arranging some flower and she also heard overheard their conversation and she knew that these people the servants they were speaking purposefully they wanted to let out their sentiments you know or they wanted their master and mistress to know their emotion their feeling what they are worried about okay so they had spoken purposefully that they were right she knew too in most of her being but there was another part of her which she herself could not understand it was not sentimental liking of the prisoner she had come to think of him as a prisoner she had not liked him even yesterday when he had said in his impulsive way anyway let me tell you that my name is tom okay so the prisoner having stayed or having seen noticed the kindness of dr sadao and his wife he had also grown quite fond and slowly his fear was uh, removed or rather he became comfortable at home in their place and he tried to uh, you know build up a relationship with the couple he had introduced he told her his name that he was tom but however she could not accept this man as their friend or as even as a known person okay and the reason is very simple they she also believed in what the uh, servants were talking about that if they help this man if they kept any connection with this man who was an american they would be considered traitor but there was something else you know there was another part of her her conscience conscience it was telling her that uh, more than it he was a human it is not about the japanese being a japanese or being an american he was a man he was a human who needed help and that was what they were trying to do they were trying to help a human by being a human right anyway let me tell you that my name is tom the man had introduced himself she had only bowed her little distant bow little distant bow keeping that maintaining the distance she had just bowed her head but not trying to ask or rather interrogate further she didn't want to make any kind of connection with the man she saw hurt in his eyes the man felt very insulted and that was visible in his eyes but she did not wish to assuage it indeed he was a great trouble in this house she did not want this man to stay longer in his house in uh, rather, rather in their house why because his uh, the more he continues to stay in their house it would be problematic for the entire family as for sadao every day he examined the wound carefully the last stitches had been pulled out this morning and the young man would in a fortnight be nearly as well as ever sadao went back to his office and carefully typed a letter to the chief of police reporting the whole matter so now that the man has recovered and he would be fit and fine after 15 days he decided to inform or rather inform about the presence of this enemy to the chief of the police and he typed a letter and what is the letter uh, stating let us see on the 21st day of february an escaped prisoner was washed up on the shore in front of my house he starts from the beginning that how they actually discover this man so far he typed that much is what he typed and then he opened a secret drawer of his desk and put the unfinished report into it the letter is not yet finished he had just started writing the letter he took it out okay uh, he took it out and then again placed it back in the drawer the letter was incomplete he was going to inform the chief of the police regarding the presence of the prisoner but then what should he write further that we will come to know in my 
next class thank you all for listening very carefully i suppose you have understood the lesson in case of any queries doubts and clarifications you can please contact me as soon as possible thank you very much have a good day